Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? <laughs>
because that was the problem in, in the kind of the city areas is right. You got that window of the day where everyone's at work. You would just be there every day. You'd be getting, you know, 80% of people home versus where it would typically be, you know, maybe 50, 60%. Yeah. That like five to nine window got expanded throughout the whole day. Yeah, exactly. And did you find, because when I was out there knocking during that period, I found people were like craving that human connection. You know, p part of them knew that maybe you weren't, this was taboo. You weren't supposed to talk, but when you gave them that distance, they just wanted, you know, someone to converse with. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd be finding myself outdoors for lengthy periods of time, much longer than uh, they should. And, and even for myself too, like, I mean, obviously we were living in the house and there was a lot of camaraderie there. Um, but just talking to new faces kind of felt like a, a same thing. I'm sure for them, um, it was a nice feeling. And uh, no, I absolutely, I think people were just kind of there to, they were happy to listen a lot more than they maybe typically would have been. Yeah. Um, for sure. And what were your housemates like? Were they, was it a rowdy bunch or? Yeah, it was a rowdy bunch. Yeah. Um, a lot of learning curves. Like we were all rookies. I think Quinn, the only experience rep with his was that he brought on that summer was his brother. Everyone else was rookie. So we all had some learning to do, but it made it, um, it was a really good environment because we were all kind of competing, challenging with each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was really good. I, I bonded really well with, uh, one of the company's top performers, Evan Kiz, um, a couple other guys in there, Vlad too. And, uh, yeah, we had a, we had a really good summer. It was super fun. It was hot too that summer. Really yeah. hot. Yeah. yeah. Do you find it's way hotter out there in, in the prairies during the summer? Uh, yeah. I found, uh, especially our second summer coming back, it was, it was like scorching. I was like, when you know out in bc was getting like the 50 degree days um 50 50 degrees <laughs> yeah yeah and it can make it, it can be challenging um yeah. but i mean you make the best of it and uh usually people are you know outside wanting to talk or, and it's a good uh, conversation starter as well i yeah. guess the weather is pretty typical but mm -hmm. um yeah it was good and so what was your approach to learning back in the day Where, was it just i'm going to show up to correlation i'm i'm going to absorb this or did you have some some different or unique way of, of going about that um yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I think it really helped that I had such a, a great mentor and leader like Quinn, um, and he was really able to kind of guide me through it. But the, the funny thing was is that I actually, when I was hired, it was like three days before the start date to the season. So all these other guys that had training leading up, they were doing sales calls, everything like that. I basically yeah. started, hit the ground running, um, and Quinn dropped me off an area for my first day. He said, you know, we're out here. I shouted him for about four hours, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, we're knocking till dark. Don't come back without a sale. He was picking me up. <laughs> My phone dies at 8 p.m. Yeah. Um, and I'm just kind of knocking out there. I made one sale on squirrels, which we didn't cover unfortunately. Yeah. So that, that was a chargeback. Um, but then he, he ended up coming in and picking me up at like 10 30 PM at some high school. My phone had been dead for hours. I was like, he's not even coming. Like he's yeah. forgotten about me. <laughs> um, but no, of course I wasn't the, the darkest case. hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was just showing me kind of, um, what it takes and, and honestly just putting on a, a great role as a leader to, um, show me that, you know, if he can do it, I can do it kind of thing. And that's where I felt I really learned a lot, um, was from him and just kind of getting the ropes of what it, takes to lead a team and, mm -hmm. um, to be successful in the job, but also to, I would say the training materials, I didn't focus so much on. And if I could go back and do one thing differently, it would absolutely be like focus on the training materials a little bit more. And my first summer, obviously it was a bit harder, um, because I was, I got kind of just propelled into it so quickly. Yeah. Um, but for my second year and bringing those other guys on as recruits and whatnot, um, I wish we kind of went a little bit harder because transitioning into my first summer in Muskoka, um, we went really hard on the training materials and it made yeah. like a world of difference. Like I doubled my sales the next season around. I got a uh, most improved veteran award at the award ceremony. Um, mainly I, I accredit a lot of the success to just, you know, training and um, like learning stuff beforehand. And you, you may think, you know, the most, um, but it, there's always things that will slip your mind that you go back and listen to the material and you're like, okay, yeah, you know, this is, I, I've, I've forgotten this and thank God I did listen to it because it's going to help me so much further. Right. Yeah. And people can tell, like they can immediately, when they ask you an objection, they can see that flicker in your eyes where they're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, don't yeah know. Exactly. You actually don't know. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, and, and so I think you've been one of the more consistent reps, um, that we've had over the years. And, and do you attribute that to, uh, Quinn is obviously a very consistent manager and, mm -hmm. and he sets a very, you know, standard pace, um, yeah. you know, a, a high pace given, but, you know, it's fairly consistent throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, beyond that leadership, were there other things you do to be consistent um, that might be unique about you? Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if there's 
one thing, obviously, you know, they say, you know, look good, feel good, working out, having that kind of um, environment with our team or my team, whatever the case be. Um, definitely, you know, you can attribute some success to that. Um, just getting up in the morning, hitting the gym, eating good, and then you're ready to get out there and just kind of put on game face and, yeah. you know, show what you've been working towards for sure. Um, but I would say like when I went into Muskoka first year, kind of not necessarily being the manager because Noah was the manager that year, Noah Holton. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, being in still a bit of a leadership position where it was like, you know, I'm, I've been around the block a little bit. Yeah. I can provide insight that it was like the, the saying, you know, lead from the front. Right. Um, you did need to kind of put on, uh, to, con to continue to main, remain consistent. Um, you needed to put on a, <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And okay, so that's interesting because a lot of the time we talk about what was it like to be um, a rookie, what was it like to be an experienced rep, and then what was it like to be a manager. Yeah. Right. But there is that, you know, I guess stepping stone in between, which is I'm like the lead experienced rep, mm -hmm. and everyone on the team still looks up to me, but I'm not technically their boss or their, yeah. or their manager. And so talk to us about kind of walking that line. Like, do you want to be more, I'm one of the boys sort of thing, yeah. or um, is it? you know, look up to me and I'm going to put on this, you know, stoic kind of mm -hmm. uh, persona. So how did you, how did you walk that? Yeah. Well, I mean, even not even so much when I was kind of the experienced, um, uh, rep that was not necessarily the manager, but almost even last year, um, where Noah and I co-managed the Muskoka office. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that, you know, he was really the rep. He was a 230 account rep, um, you know, 200 plus K in revenue. And for me, I was more so about, you know, 150, 140 K in revenue. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of worked hand in hand there really well in the sense of Noah kind of showed what was possible in the zone that we were at in terms of yeah. sales. Um you know, paved the way for that and was also a fantastic, you know, leader to be there for the boys. And when I was, you know, a little bit more not necessarily hands on um, with them, but I played a bit more of the, um, you know, you can come and talk to me kind of thing. And and that's yeah. where our, our leadership styles really complemented each other. Um, and yeah, it worked out really nicely. And I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. He, it, it, it made for a very um, inviting office space, workspace, right? Yeah. That is a nice way to structure because, yeah, there, there's always this informal kind of, I don't want to go talk to my boss. I want to go talk to someone who, yeah. you know, has been there and, and done that, but is also not really, you know, my, my, yeah, I don't know how to say it. Like, like the guy who's doing your performance review, even though we don't. Yeah. Do and that, they but, can, they yeah. can relate to it in a sense as well. Like I'm sure there were some situations where, oh, you know, Noah's gone and popped out, you know, eight on the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe I'm having a bit of a tougher week, you know, they can come and maybe confide in me a little bit more comfortably than it would be going to him and vice versa. Yeah, like they, yeah. that would work both ways. You know, I would have my great weeks and Noah mm -hmm. wouldn't, and it would work equally hand in hand. Um, and so I always think that that's a super cool thing. You, you just always want to be open and be available to them as mm -hmm. much as it's, you know, you're working for your own per personal success and to make your own money. Um, you want to make sure that they have a good experience and that's really yeah. what going forward for this summer. Um, I want to focus on the most. It's just I've I've got a decent amount of young guys on my team. Mm -hmm. um, as I've graduated university, their first second year university, and I just want them to have kind of the same experience that I have, mm -hmm. or I've, I've had, which is um, you know this is a a great company, fosters fantastic leadership. I can tell you that, um, and also just good work habits. And uh, you know, as a bonus, you can make a ton of money, right? Um, yeah, if you do yeah. well, and so. I just want them to be able to go forward and not have like a sour taste left in their mouths and just be like, this is awesome. I want to come back whether or not they come back or not, at yeah. least that they can say that, you know, for that summer, I worked as hard as I could have. And I was in a dope location and, um, made some good money, but overall just walked away with a ton of great skills. Yeah. And that's exactly what it's done for me over the course of my now going on five years of doing it. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. Just going back to what you said a little bit earlier about, uh, you know, sometimes Noah would go out and put like eight up, right. Mm -hmm. And it's, you become more approachable to the reps. Kevin and I had kind of that same setup where Kevin would just do like something stupid, like 10 a day, yeah. like every single day of the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'd be out there, you know, two, three, four sort of thing. And, uh, a lot of the time, you know, we would give some sort of training and they're like, well, obviously that works for you. Like your yeah. God's gift to pass control. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, it's, it's nice to have someone more relatable that 100%. You know, they can run things by hundred percent. And like, even when you and uh, Kevin would come up and kind of run correlations in our office, you guys would have completely different takes on things mm -hmm. and provide completely different, you know, insights. And like, that's exactly what it was for Noah and I is, um, you know, I can provide certain insights into these certain situations. Um, whereas, 
he can provide insights into these other situations. And that's why I honestly think like co-managing as much as it's great to be a sole leader and I am excited for it. Mm -hmm. I honestly wouldn't have had it any other way. Um, just because, you know, you can learn what works, what doesn't, um, what is, um, like receptive to the reps as well. And that way they kind of have, uh, two different people that they can go to um, where you can figure out, you know, what needs to be done for them yeah. in a sense, right? All right. And so what's the game plan for this year? So actually, I guess we'll take one step back. What is unique about Muskoka and the market that you guys operate in there? Yeah. So when Noah kind of pioneered the um, the idea, I was, I was, we had always kind of talked in our, in our apartment at school because um, we were roommates about how, oh, it would be so good, you know, up in cottage country. Like, it just makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's one thing, especially, like, where my cottage is, which is northern Ontario, um, where it's, like, really buggy, kind of more cottage style. Yeah. Um, but Muskoka is, like, cream of the crop, you know, they're not even really cottages. They're just like Boathouse, Ozarks, yeah. lake house <laughs> yeah. style places. Um, and so we just thought it was a fantastic idea. He pitched the idea. Um, we went on to it. And I guess the the unique part of it is we drive door to door. So instead of everyone in a car group, um, each person has their own car. So we're going out. And yes, um, you know, some people may say it's not great for gas. It's just the way that it has to be done. The yeah. area is so spread out um, that you, you just can't walk door to door. Mm -hmm. early season when we're in the towns for sure um but when we get up into the lake areas you really have to be like in your own vehicle driving door yeah isn't it like 200 meter like driveway sometimes oh yeah no sometimes they're even like click long driveways um and you just you're driving right up to the door and it works nicely because some people i I find a lot of people honestly about 90 percent of them really feel that it's like an appointment versus just like you showing up on the door you're kind of just saying like hey you know we're in the area i was just over there talking to blah 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 i I was just popping over because you know they said this or I saw your um, driveway tag. I just want to let you know what we're doing. Yeah. And for them, it's a bit more of a personal experience, especially to like we go, you know, midsummer when it's hot out. We'll go knock on the door. No one answers. It's a mandatory that we're walking around the back of the house. Yeah. Go and check to see if anyone's on the Which dock. Which is scary at first, oh, right? So like, scary. Just, yeah. So scary. Yeah. Funny story. Like um, one of the guys that I worked with in my first summer in Muskoka. His name was Jack Campbell. Maybe like three weeks into the summer um we hadn't done that yet like we hadn't gone down to people's docks or done anything like we were still pretty um tiptoeing around the whole situation just kind of figuring out what works it was big it was i think it was may long weekend actually we got into this place massive house humongous beautiful landscaping we can tell that they're all down at the boat about to leave um and i'm like no man like let's just go like i know i don't really want to disturb them um because this was also very fresh in my mind as well and he's just like nope we're going down to the boathouse we're going to talk to them right now um probably about like 20 teens down there the whole family like pretty heavy stuff like you're 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 basically pitching a panel at that point um ended up selling them and it just kind of showed me like okay this is what needs to be done if you want to be successful in this specific market you know you don't need to be doing that per se in every market um but if you're in those certain situations where people really are just on vacation yeah per se um you you kind of have to just go after it and it will pay off and i would say like 30 percent of my sales last summer um were done way off the doorstep like starting off of the doorstep yeah right like in the dock in the backyard out on the deck or whatever by the lake um and that is a super unique uh aspect to our market that a lot of other markets if not i don't think any really have Mm -hmm. um so well i'm trying to think like the closest comparable is like um some guy's cutting the grass and you're like cut the mower cut the mower right yeah and and like even that's pretty nerve-wracking or or someone's like hustling out to their car and and you want to get that 30 seconds in Mm -hmm. just before they they drive off um or even just waving someone i guess if they're in the backyard you can kind of see their back there and kind of waving them off um yeah, so that's interesting. That's got to be kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. We coined the term uh, car pitches. So basically, like, we'll be in our car going down a dirt road, a, mm-hmm. a, a cottage road or whatever, um, and someone will be coming up. And, like, because the the vacancy, I guess you could call it, of a, the amount of people who are home um, are so far and few, like, you just really have to just try every single opportunity, yeah, right? Like, yeah. you could go down to a street of 10 cottages and there'd be absolutely nobody home. And that's just... That's just mm-hmm. the statistics of it. Like people just aren't up at their place. You see a car, you want to make the best fit. And you'd be surprised at how lucky you get. People are interested then. They're also like taken aback. They're like, you know, this guy's really out here trying to, you know, make yeah. it for himself here. He's stopping me on the road. <laughs> I picture to- you like you move in the middle of the dirt yeah. road and you're like honking. Like, hey. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, and it's even worse too sometimes when they uh, when there's cars coming behind you, and then you got to mm. split off and like reconvene. You can both get out of your cars, shake hands, yeah. And it's a really cool experience, especially too when you can you can close the deal. Um, I mean, for yourself, like you can only imagine what that does for your confidence, right? Yeah. Like it's like it's the insight checkpoint. You got to pay the toll, which is a thirty second. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Pitch. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's funny, man. Yeah. Well, it's cool to hear about um, the different setup you guys have up there. But your closing rate has to be really quite high then, right? Because you're going to talk to like how many people in a day? Yeah. So like if you could would compare it to a city um, office, right? Like let's take Montreal or Edmonton, for example. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably talking to about 100 people a day, uh, maybe less. Actually, that might be a stretch. I, I'd say probably about like 80 people a day. Mm -hmm. um, for us, you know, on a good day, like let's say a long weekend, you know, maybe 25 people, 30 people, um, sometimes even less in those early season, like May early May when we're kind of just stretching um, and going into those cottage areas on the weekends before people are out of school, kids are out of school, you know, you're getting like 10, 15 people that you're talking yeah. to. So you really got to be on the ball. Um, but that being said, it does go hand in hand because for a lot of times people do kind of see the need for the service a little bit more up there, mm -hmm. um, especially when you have like, you know, castles and they don't want the spiders in their boathouse because, yeah. you know, of course they poo on the boat and <laughs> it's this whole thing, but it, it yeah. does, it, it, it complements itself nicely. Um, but yes, the closing rate is is pretty high um i would say for a lot of times uh, in midsummer like these guys think that you know there isn't that much competition up there but there is there's a ton yeah. of people and a lot of people who are really loyal to their companies you know a lot of those places yes there's a ton of new builds up there um but a lot of them are also grandfathered in cottages they've been with the company for you know 10 years or whatever yeah. it's a and small company exactly yeah, owner operator yeah exactly and they just they their loyalty is like if i turned on him it would be like you know me turning on one of my family members or something. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, you're able to, uh, you know, everyone's able to be switched over. You just got to show them the value in it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it works out nicely. So tell me about the culture and, and what goes into building a culture on a, on a team. Uh, and so if you can picture yourself as, uh, maybe like a rookie manager or something like that, cause you guys, you know, you had these reels at the end of the year you were, you were mm -hmm. putting out and, and everyone on your team was so bought in. Mm -hmm. And so how did you guys get that level of, of commitment? Was it just organizing group activities? Like you all went to the gym together? Was it that sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like definitely group activities, you know, we would, we have the privilege of being able to do like, you know, boat days or whatever. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. and every office does it's just a little bit more accessible for us. Um, and so our thing was like, you know, Sundays we would either go do some golf, we would go out on the water when it was warm enough. We just try and really make use of the the beautiful area that we've been given to work in, yeah. um, which, you know, a lot of other places don't have that opportunity. Um, but I would say, like, it was, we all lived in the same house. The office didn't really, str the office, I guess you could say, the house. Um, like, we ran our correlations in-house as well. And, I'm sh and, you know, coming to an office, we I've never had that, that um uh, experience, I guess you could yeah. say to be like running the correlation in an office. But for us, it was, you know, you're on time, 1130, 1145 every day, um, down in the living room. And we would just get everyone fired up. We were also really tight boys by the end of the summer. Um, and it just, I, I would say like, you could almost think of it and don't take this the wrong way as like a, a frat house in a sense. Like it was like, we, <laughs> yeah. we all really just like thrived off of each other. There was a lot of excitement in the house, a lot of competition too, especially we had Blair who was a uh, third rookie last season. Um, so, you know, of course all the other rookies are kind of looking up to him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, how's he doing this? And, um, but I, I would say that on top of, um, you know, just making it so that they can appreciate what they're going to do every day. You know, like I, 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 I'm talking a lot about the office and the, and the the landscape and stuff, but I don't really know a, a, a another 20 year old who gets to drive to work with a lake on each side of himself. Um, and I mean that could translate into any any office, any workspace, right? Like you just have to um, make them kind of make the reps realize, um, you know, that what they have is so unique and so yeah, you know yeah. um, you know it's an opportunity that not many people get or not many people at least are willing to try. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things. I think we were just like, we were just passionate about it. You know, like we were just really mm -hmm. um, excited to see them succeed yeah. in the job, um, which obviously showed them that, you know, we cared and um, that we wanted them to just once again, have a fantastic experience at the job. And I mean, it's hard to, it's, it's, it is hard to not love it up there. I mean, we yeah. had our hiccups for sure. Um, service side, whatever, as any new branch does. 
Um, but for the most part, it was just kind of creating an environment, making sure that everyone's included. Yeah. Well, you guys took an active interest in your people, right? Like yeah. there's, there's one type of manager where it's like, I'm just going to, you know, get this huge herd of cattle and see who makes it through the, mm -hmm, <laughs> the mm -hmm. summer yep. sort of thing. Right. And another type of manager who's really going to take an active interest and say, we're going to have a small tight knit group. Um, we're going to take an active interest in managing you guys. We're going to do activities that build us together as a team. We're yep. going to pick each other up and dust each other off when, uh, when we fall down and, mm -hmm. Um, man, you guys had a great culture up there. Yeah, it was awesome. And like, I would say to that, like the small team atmosphere and, and don't get me wrong. Um, you know, cause I haven't had any experience leading a large team, so I don't know what that it would translate over to. Um, but the small team really does have a, uh, uh, camaraderie, I guess you could say that no other office would, because everyone really does like feel that they're a piece of the puzzle, yeah. um, in a sense, right. And that they have a part to play and like it, you can really feel it, especially like those morning sales meetings, correlations. Um, and so I would attribute that to, uh, a, a piece of the, you know, having a successful, um, environment. It would just be that, yeah. you know, you have a small net team and they all work really well off of each other. Yeah, definitely. I, I remember mm -hmm. coming up there to do, uh, some of the meetings and you could, tell every single person on that ha on that team had like a distinct personality yep. and it would yeah, show yeah, in, yeah. in every correlation with uh, the questions they asked and all that. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so what, what are your, what are your big plans then? So this year and, and beyond, what, what do you got in mind? Yeah. So, um, this summer, I mean, uh, my, my, my goal is to kind of have a, a goal in mind to work towards, mm -hmm. um, which I haven't quite decided on just yet, but I think what I want to do is go do some, uh, ski competing in the off season. Cool. Um, right. so maybe go to Europe, do some competitions, see where that goes. And really that's going to be my drive throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. Um, well, one, one piece at least, um, is to just be able to, you know, have some, a, a good money and just kind of be able to go out there freely compete what yeah. I need to. So wait, so wait, tell me about that. I, I didn't know anything about this. So, yeah. uh, what, what kind of events, like are you slaloming? Are you doing backflips? Like what yeah, does that look yeah. like? Yeah. So, um, before I went to school, like obviously growing up in Squamish, I grew up skiing at Whistler. Um, mm -hmm. so we call it free ride essentially. Um, which means, you know, you pick a face, there's cliffs, natural jumps, you know, whatever the case be. Um, and you just find the best way down it. That's kind of looks that's the best, cool. yeah, best, <laughs> best tricks. So that's like unprepared, like the, what, the, the snow cat hasn't gone through that area. No, nope, like, no, no. It's all wow. off piece skiing. Um, and I mean, it's in my opinion, it's the best kind. I mean, some people may say that park skiing is the best. <laughs> I disagree. Um, I don't know is your chair about. broken there? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm leaning back. <laughs> um, but, uh, hold on. We might have to put a quick pause on here. There's a thing on the left hand side, a little, a little stick you can, uh, yeah. I guess I lean. It's fine. We'll roll it. But, uh, yeah, so th that sounds a little bit dangerous, though. So you're going off the uh, off the beaten trail, and have you ever been in a hairy situation there where, like, a snowbank's rolled out from under you and you realize you're close to a cliff or something? Um, I mean, yeah, like, avalanches are some things you got to be cautious about. But, I mean, they, in those competition settings, they take the um, necessary precautions for it to not be a, a problem yeah. or an issue or at least um, – minimizing, mitigating the risk is kind of mm -hmm. the term they use. And so uh, what's the coolest uh, trick you can do then, I guess? Because the they all have wild names, right? Yeah, like a, yeah, like a, a double backflip, maybe once upon a time, should be able to come back to me. I'm actually heading to Europe on uh, on the 5th of March, um, so in like a week, basically, um, to do some skiing out there and just kind of seeing how I'm skiing and where I'm at, and then obviously jump starting right into the summer. Um, and and I, I mean, that's another topic of discussion is like this job does, you know, if you, if you can do well. Um, it opens the doors for a ton of other things. Like yeah. I didn't know that I was going to be thinking that I wanted to go to ski competing after post mm -hmm. this, but, um, you know, if you're successful at it, it can do those things for you, open you up to travel. I was just, uh, away with some friends, Noah Vag, um, Noah Halton, those guys, we were in uh, Southeast Asia for three and a half months. Fantastic trip, crazy cultural experience. Um, I'm getting very sidetracked, but, uh, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. back to the skiing, we'll see how it happens. Um, it's a pretty cool, uh, it's a pretty cool environment and they, it's like big screen TV, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they got yeah. all the cameras, sometimes the helicopter gets in there, the mm -hmm. drone, um, it's pretty interesting and yeah, we'll see how it goes. But after that, I'm not sure we'll have to see, um, kind of want to do something entrepreneurial. It's more so where my degree is, whether I come sure. back to sell. Um, but really, I just want to, you know, set that office up for success so somebody else can come in and take over and it'd be pretty turnkey for them. Yes, um, whether that be, you know, one of our experienced reps, Colgan or 
anyone else really who yeah. feels that they they can take the reins on it. It's definitely a, a different experience, I can tell you for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I like the unique lifestyle in the off season. Uh, I love your approach to managing and, and to being a rep. And we're just about at the 30 minute mark, so we do have to cut it off. Yep. Uh, we could sit here and talk for hours, I'm sure. But Absolutely. ladies and gentlemen, Jack McKegg, thank you for taking the time to join us.